These fan games, their developers, websites, and all related entities are neither affiliated with nor endorsed by Nintendo. Mario, Luigi, and all related names, graphics, and concepts are a property of Nintendo. Guys, I promise I'm doing this by choice. Do you remember 2015? It was September. The Wii U was almost three, but up until this point, it didn't matter because the system was basically on life support. However, September 10th, 2015 was a momentous moment in Mario history. Yeah, the Wii U wasn't really looked upon fondly, but one thing that did put its spot on the map was a little old game titled Super Mario Maker. What? I can't understate the fact that this release was truly a historic moment in gaming, really. I mean, to seamlessly create and design your own Mario levels was every Nintendo kid's dream. Some wanted to be a firefighter, I wanted to be Takashi Tezuka. Mario Maker fulfilled a desire by many to bring their Mario ideas to life, to look through the lens of a level designer, and to share their personal creations around the world. But if we were to turn back the clock even further, back in a time where Mario Maker wasn't even conceived yet, would this Mario making desire still be present? Was it even offered? No. Let's take a trip back to 2007. One of the earliest forms of Mario making madness was found in your browser, Flash Games. Man, these things take me back. If you were a kid in the 2000s with a crappy slow computer, there's a good chance uh, you were bored once. A web browser plus internet equaled free games that required the specifications of a potato to play. So in other words, back in my day, the library computer was my gaming PC. And of course, me being the Nintendo fanboy, I was always on the search for Mario Flash games. And most of the time, these sites were littered with them. And while I had my fair share of hours obliterating Koopas in Mario Combat, I never got a chance to indulge in one of the more popular fan games of this era, Super Mario Flash. This is a Mario game, all right. I know this may look like nothing special, but for Flash game standards, uh, this is actually pretty polished compared to something like this. And even though I never grew up on this, it gives off an extreme nostalgic vibe. Like I can see it now playing this on the Internet Explorer surrounded by pop up ads like Super Mario Galaxy free to play here. Mario crushes Peach's dream extreme Sonic now. versus Mario gruesome fighter 97 play here. This game is fine. Like I would have totally ate this up as a kid. It has a simple campaign and does what it's set out to do. Replicate a retro Mario experience on the web browser. But the thing the thing that really made it stand out was its side mode, the level editor. And this is the earliest form of accessible Mario making I could find. It's surprisingly intuitive for a 2007 Flash game. I mean, it's not very complex, it, it's limited, but honestly, I could see this being a great introduction to level creation. It's got a decent variety of enemies and tiles to use. Its mechanics and objects are meant to replicate the original Super Mario Bros. And while it does a pretty good job at that, you're also under the umbrella of its limitations. I mean, you can only do so much with this amount of real estate and objects. Something about this editor though, makes it so charming. Like yes, it's dated in many aspects, but come on. Like you can even save and share levels via text codes you would copy onto notepad files or forums. Something about that is just so wholesome to me. I even went ahead and played random levels I found on some old forums to get a taste of what this community was like. And let me say this, nothing has changed. They've been making invisible block trolls since 2007. You Mario Maker jokesters are nothing special. These levels, while messy for the most part, physically feel like they have so much history behind them. Like it, it just feels so personal. Some kid probably put their heart and soul into creating this level at their grandma's desktop and I'm just over here spitting on it like, this is garbage. A game over has never hit harder than bold italicized aerial. I can see why Super Mario Flash was a popular pick in the Flash game era. Something that offers creative freedom will always be appealing, and this was one of the first Mario experiences that gave people that freedom on a simple and accessible level. But let's move forward a couple of years to 2009. We're staying within the Flash game realm and looking at a game that <laughs> seriously doesn't fit this criteria because it's just that impressive. 
Super Mario 63 is a game that surpasses the bar of typical Flash games in almost every way. I have very faint memories stumbling upon this game, but I do, however, have vivid memories playing it, which I think says a lot. Like, this had a lasting impression on me. The game feels extremely smooth to control, taking elements from both 2D and 3D Mario and combining them into a unique amalgamation of Mario that I have never really experienced before. And again, let me remind you, we're talking about a game that you can play on your web browser. I never really got far into it, but it's an impressive feat nonetheless. And just to add a cherry on top of the experience, this game also offered a level editor. This genuinely impressed me. It almost felt a little overwhelming, even. It's a substantial upgrade compared to Mario Flash in terms of creation and limits. Tons of variables to work with here. And on top of that, each variable also offers a shocking amount of customization. Like, I'm talking customizing specific block sizes, adjusting decimals within X and Y positions, adjusting specific speeds and rotations and moving platforms, and manipulating enemy behavior. Like, the objects it offers, plus the solid foundation found in the movement, makes this editor open to an extreme amount of potential. Its gameplay even accommodates non-linear level structure, which which lends itself more to expansive levels, adding multiple objectives, and overall offers more elaborate creations. I wouldn't recommend hopping right into this editor though. The nice thing about Mario Flash is 2D Mario is something everyone understands. This game, however, functions a bit differently and definitely has a unique feel to it. This didn't prevent people from fully diving into it though. There was honestly a pretty big following. There was even a feature that allowed you to browse through user-created levels, but unfortunately Unfortunately, it doesn't function anymore. Luckily, you can still find and share levels via codes. It's just sort of a hassle digging through the ancient side of the web to find them. I know this isn't the classic linear 2D Mario experience, but I felt like it needed an honorable mention being one of the more substantial level creation tools back in the late 2000s. The base game was an amazingly solid foundation, but the built-in level designer shaped its longevity and gave countless creative hours to players, which gave countless hours of playtime for the community. Honestly, like, props to this Flash game for real. In the late 2000s, it was evident that there was a strong desire for Mario making, coupled with the fact that the internet was increasingly becoming more popular and accessible and fan projects and communities were on the arise, Mario fans wanted to take even bigger steps forward in allowing people to truly create quality Mario projects on an efficient and simple level, which led to developers creating full-on Mario-making programs designed exclusively for level creating. Like, no more Flash games with side modes. Like, this was the real deal. And with a program like Super Mario Bros. X, this offered something that was truly remarkable. Super Mario Bros. X is not a game. It's a way of life. Released in 2009, Super Mario Bros. X was a fan-made project that allowed users to create not just single levels, but full Mario games. It's funny, cause like I heard about this game as a kid, not even knowing that this was a Mario making engine. I just assumed Mario Bros. X was like this sick singular fan game that basically combined every element of classic 2D Mario. Well, I was wrong. It is that, but even more. The thing I remember playing was a pre-installed game that was bundled with the program to showcase the power of the editor. And when playing and watching videos on this, I just assumed that this was the entire game based on how polished everything was. Little did I know, this was only the beginning of what was even offered. This editor features... Whew. Custom sprites, tile sets, music, cutscenes, NPCs, enemies, objects, items from Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, World, Metroid, Zelda, Sonic, the this isn't even Mario anymore! This isn't a Mario engine, this is a platformer engine! I'm embarrassed to even admit, I, I didn't even know anything about the countless Mario games that spawned from this editor. It's like this devastating feeling in my soul of missing out on this expansive community of amazing Mario games. As a kid, I guess I just failed to glance over at the level editor button on the launch screen. I'll be seeing myself out. Basically, the bottom line is... 
Super Mario Bros. X is a powerful creation tool I had no prior knowledge of. The capabilities are seemingly endless, within the scope of a Mario-esque platformer, of course. When I say it combines every element of classic 2D Mario, I, I, I truly mean it. It offers every enemy, boss, item, tile set, background, the whole shebang. And what's even cooler is you can mix and match anything and everything. There's some really cool possibilities for Mario combinations. And with this engine, it supports all different gameplay styles seamlessly. If you've ever played the Mario Bros. 3 e-reader levels, it, it basically plays like that. You can even import custom assets into your levels, making the possibilities truly endless. Oh, and did I mention you can fully customize and create world maps as well? Now, obviously, this program wasn't scaled to this degree right away. It was supported with updates till 2011 with the main developer of the project, ReDigit, moving his efforts over to his own little personal game titled <laughs> Terraria. Give me one second. The level editor strikes a decent balance between easy to understand and complex design, but there's just so much at your disposal. Once you figure out where the basic essentials are, it's easy enough to place elements around for a simple level design, but it's obvious that once you master how this program fully works, you can truly create some beautifully crafted Mario games. For accessible Mario making programs, I wouldn't say it's the best user friendly system. There's just so much here and so much customization, it's absurd. But because of that, this is the top of the line in terms of creative ceiling. It's crazy smooth to play and test, it offers every classic Mario trope you can think of, and it's just truly a pretty remarkable program. While Super Mario Bros. X impressed me in many ways, it's hard to overtake the powerful tool that is... Nostalgia. If you ever heard of yo-yo games, I have the utmost respect for you. Unlike everything I've mentioned so far, this program is something I can actually speak on through personal experience. Growing up, one of my friends showed me this super charming Mario fan game he found on the good old wide web. Mario Builder, released in 2008 by Ting Thing, was yet another Mario making program. I didn't play it a crazy amount. Uh, my mom's laptop was really the only reliable computer at the time, but mainly the reason for lack of playtime was that I was so young and PC illiterate. Like, there was a time where whenever I'd want to play this, I would download a separate copy of it because I had no idea where to find the program on my laptop, so I'm sure I had like 15 different copies of this game just sitting around somewhere. I, I mean, I eventually figured it out, but geez, all that to say. It's a miracle this thing still runs. This is your full-blown Mario making program. Custom levels, world maps, yada yada yada, I'm, I'm sure you've heard this once or twice. You could even export your full creations into EXEs, meaning you basically could share your completed creation as a full-on downloadable game with nothing else required. Similar to Mario Bros. X, it combines multiple Mario games with elements from countless Mario titles, including things like this. You know, uh from the hit title Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins. The thing I love about Mario Builder is that it's so charming as well as clear in its presentation. Everything is clearly organized. It was super simple to understand for a young kid like myself back in the day. It's not like Mario Bros. X wasn't like this. It's just apparent that Mario Builder showcased a little more care into making things more user-friendly as well as fun and playful. Everything you need is found in this bottom menu here. If you double click on certain assets, it brings up a quick menu, that way you don't have to cycle through everything one at a time, and from there you just place and erase. Again, like Mario Bros X, it's super simple to place the essentials down, but also has an advanced ceiling to create some really cool stuff. I know I'm comparing these two a lot, but these were the two most prominent Mario Creator programs prior to 2015, at least from what I remember slash researched, so I feel it's only natural for me to compare the two, but it's also sort of challenging, like this isn't comparing something as drastic as like t-shirts to tank tops. Right, like they both set out to design effective level creators and both do a great job in my eyes. Honestly, I think there's just a few different pros and cons and preferences to both. Yeah, what he said.
I think where Mario Builder really shines is its workflow from an all-in-one package perspective. Within a couple of button clicks, you can bounce your way around level editing, world map creating, title screen making. All the necessities to make a full-on Mario game is here in a very simplified, uniformed structure. At first glance, you can tell Mario Builder is a casual, appealing experience that presents itself really well. Compare that to Mario Bros. X, where the focus and efforts were less on creating a playful software and more about refining the creation mechanics, providing more freedom and customization, which in turn can make things a little more complex and less accessible for a casual audience. It sounds like I'm babyfying Mario Builder, that that's not my goal, it's just very easy to pick up on. And that's not to say Mario Builder can't be complex either. There's plenty of tools at your disposal to make some elaborate and well-designed creations. But I would say if you're looking for a higher creative ceiling, objectively, Mario Bros. X has more to offer. But with all that being said, looking back, Mario Builder was a perfectly balanced Mario Maker for me as a kid. It was so accessible for me to pick up and create things, but yet there was still a big enough scope of the game where it seemed like the possibilities were endless. I have very fond memories messing around with this program, playing my friends' levels and creations, and I even remember downloading other Mario games that were directly made from Mario Builder. It's a program that honestly gave me a better perspective of how fine-tuned a Mario platformer is. I got slapped in the face with the fact that it's harder than it looks to be a game designer. But I gotta say, it definitely scratched an itch to experience what it was like to see through the eyes of a Nintendo developer. To some extent. I guess that itch didn't get scratched enough because Mario making has had such a strong pull on people for so long. Not just before Mario Maker, but even after its release. So many amazing projects have come from this passionate Nintendo community. Mario Maker itself will always hold its own for its unique charm and emphasis on object interaction and experimentation. But as for Mario creation in general, the community is doing what Nintendo don't. After being taken down, most of these programs have spawned many spiritual successors or even sequels. Super Mario Bros. X lives on with SMBX2, an extension of the previous engine with many new features and updates. Super Mario 63 has inspired many projects like the Super Mario 63 Redux or the Super Mario Bros. 127 sequel. My good friend Rovertronic even made a substantial level creator for Super Mario 64 of all things. Mario Build! 64. I mean, come on, this is just impressive. It's just crazy to see the amount of community-driven projects that have arised over the years, all because this Italian plumber has inspired so many people. That, and it's just fun to create Mario levels. <laughs> About that. Uh, my level code is in the description. Please play my Mario Flash level. <laughs> <laughs>